Hey guys, how's it going? It's been a little while. I'll catch you up in a little bit. First off, let's jump straight into what I'm doing today. These trousers, one of my favorite pairs of trousers. They're from Zara. I really like the pleating on them, but the button has come off, which is very annoying. Now, I'm not the kind of person who feels like once you lose a button on trousers, you need to throw them away. I think that's a big waste. They've got a lot of life left in them. Not a huge problem because I wear belts a lot of the time. So I've kind of just been able to get away with not having a button, but I would like to put it back on. It's been on my to-do list for way too long now. And I figured I would share with you how I do it. It's a useful skill to have, something I learned from my mum. It saved many pairs of trousers for me. Don't know why I keep knocking buttons off. Probably not a good sign. So yeah, I'm gonna quickly run you through what I do to sew a button back on, and I hope it helps. So there's a few things you're gonna need. You're gonna need a needle with a little hole at the top. You're gonna need a thread scissors and the button and a thimble if you don't want to stab yourself now if you don't have the button sometimes the trousers come with uh spare buttons on the label i'm sure you've probably seen them before this these ones actually did these came with two spare buttons they obviously knew that the button was going to come off eventually but i actually saved the button from when it came off so i don't need to use the spare ones which is quite handy so we're going to start by threading the needle through usually the end of the thread is a little bit like frayed don't know if you can see that it's a little bit like tricky at the end if you try and thread it now it's just going to go all over the place and kind of keep fraying i would suggest chopping it a little bit off with scissors to get rid of any fraying uh or giving it a little lick wet the ends and it kind of straightens them out makes it a bit easier to thread there we go so you want to slide it through about a foot in length i'm not very good at measuring it's kind of a foot right put the needle side and then snip it like so you'll end up with essentially two threads because it's doubled up that will make the uh the button secured on a little bit better because you're essentially, every time you're threading it, you're threading two threads. You want to take the end and you want to tie them together like this. And you'll get a little knot at the end. We kind of want that knot to be a little bit bigger because it's going to kind of act as a stopper and try and get the knot in like the same position each time. That was really hard to do in front of the camera. So <laughs> I'm just going to try again. All right, there we go. I fi finally got a few knots in the same spot. Okay, so it's a nice big knot, basically. It essentially means that when you pull the thread through the trousers, the knot will kind of stop it going all the way through. Um, and if you pull it too hard, it will go through. So you just need to thread it again. Right, moving on to the actual trousers. Make sure the button's in the right place. Um, I like to do the zip up. And if there's any other buttons, like there's one on the inside, this is like a double button situation. Do them up so that essentially you can see where the button is supposed to be. Now, with the hole that the button goes through, you want it to line up on the very so on, on the very edge not the very very edge but like closer to the outside so that it doesn't have too much slack i'm going to line it up and i'm going to thread the needle from the inside to the outside i'm going to go through and hopefully through the outside of that hole you see where it's a little bit more open there get our thimble so we don't stab ourselves and it might take a couple tries to get it through um as in like in the right position you may even be able to see where the old button was if there's like leftover thread it takes a few tries there we go so don't know if you can see this in the lighting but it's basically the, the needle's gone through where the button will go so we're going to pull that through all the way until the knot stops it going any further i'm actually going to thread the needle back through the buttonhole um just so we can move that part of the fabric out the way so i'm going to undo the inside button and undo the zip and we're just left with this part so that we can focus on the actual button drop the button didn't i i don't know where the needle is either so you want to grab your button you want to thread through any one of the holes let it slide all the way down and then kind of hold it there and you're basically going to want to go for the the hole opposite the one that you thread through so diagonally opposite that's the first one done this is the tricky part you want to go back through the fabric and out of one of the holes in the button which is quite tricky to do when you can't see where you're where you're doing it so you kind of just have to use a little bit of guesswork so that the needle is going like out of one of the holes that hasn't been threaded yet so we're just going to pull that through and then same thing again but the opposite hole go back in like this there we go so we've got like the thread has kind of crossed itself over um, and you just change direction each time you come out um, you come out a different hole do the opposite one go back in and you basically keep doing that keep looping it around so again a bit of guesswork but we want to come out the first hole we threaded again back to number one go back through number two which is opposite make sure it's make sure there's no like loose thread because if you start continuing to sew it when there's like a bit of loose thread and you haven't pulled all the way through it gets really tangled and annoying 
then back out again through number three. This is where a thimble comes in handy so you don't stab yourself, but I kind of... Using a thimble, I can't feel anything. You basically just got to keep going round and round through each hole diagonally. Pick a different way each time. Kind of a nice activity to do with like a podcast or something on in the background because it's one of those things that once you know what you're doing, you don't need to focus too much. You can just kind of keep doing it. I'd say do about three loops of each like diagonal hole. So six in total. Um, I go a bit overboard because I get paranoid it's going to break again and I don't want to keep sewing them back on. So I do like, I don't know, eight or ten loops in total. But we're going to stick to like four for each each one. When you feel like you've uh, done enough or when you run out of thread, you basically want to tie up the thread on the inside so that the loose knot or whatever it is is like hidden away. The way I do it is I basically slide the needle underneath the other threads that you've been doing. And as you pull it through, it's kind of creating a knot. The other thing you can do is slide it through and then take the loose thread and wrap it around several times. And then when you pull it through, it will kind of pull it into a knot, which is really a quick way of doing it. And don't be afraid to pull it quite tight because you need to make sure it's tight. Just don't break the thread because it's really annoying when you break it and it's too short to kind of redo it all. And then essentially, once you're done, you just snip thread Say about here you want a little bit of slack so that if it loosens it doesn't completely just undo um, if you cut it too close to the knot it will undo quicker but yeah just like a centimeter i'd leave it good as new i'll try these on in a minute and make sure it's definitely in the right place i do actually have another pair of trousers uh which the button came off which i'm gonna sew now same pair of trousers in a different color yeah the exact same trousers but in like an olive color but clearly the design the button wasn't on properly or something and probably why they also provided spare buttons because they knew so anyway, I'm going to do that one as well. I won't show you how I do it because you've seen the first one. What have I been up to recently? Biggest change for me has been I got a new job. It's in the video game industry, which is a bit different to what I was used to. I do like video games. I grew up playing them and it's kind of been a bit of a nostalgia trip for me, which has been great. I'm also working from home, which is also awesome. That's... What? What have I done there? It's also meant that I could pretty much move anywhere. So I decided to move a bit closer into London. Uh, I'm on a tube line now, which just makes seeing people so much easier. As you can see, new room, new space. The office for my work, um, I go out about once a month, is, um, is outside of London, kind of in the countryside. So <laughs> when I do go in, it's quite a long commute, quite a big one. Right, I'm really glad I've actually managed to get these fixed finally because I was a big fan of these trousers, um, and they were definitely not ready to get rid of yet. they got many years left in them. I think I'll put together a little outfit with these trousers now that I've got the button back on. Thank you for joining me on my button sewing adventures. I hope if you're looking to sew a button onto trousers, then this was helpful. And yeah, hopefully see you in the next one. Bye, guys.